our PowerPoint, uh, we need to buy somebody some time to try and fix it. So I'm gonna start with announcements this morning before we begin in song. So you all are the lucky ones to hear all the announcements if we have some late folks. Uh, so to uh, have in your mind for this week, we have the produce market on Tuesday. So if you're able to sign up for that out in the Welcome Center, uh, please do. You can help out on Tuesday afternoon. This is a really good gift uh, because we do this right before Thanksgiving. and. It can help families out for their Thanksgiving dinner, so sign up for that. Also, you can sign up for the Cookie Walk, which is a, um, it, it, the inserts are in your bulletin, so if you are a baker or a wannabe baker, uh, please sign up for that. It's a, a fundraiser for Joseph's Coat. And you can also sign up to help out at Breakfast with the Santa. We're still looking for volunteers. So there is an adorable poster made by our children's minister, uh, Betsy, out in the Welcome Center. You can sign up for that either to help set up or to cook or clean or uh, just hang out with the kids in the crafts. So please, please help with that. That's a big project. Let's see. Also, if you could pick up your offering envelopes, uh, this helps save us on postage so that we don't have to mail it out to everybody. So they are over by the elevator, which is also broken, and we're working on it. Um, but if you can go towards the broken elevator and pick up the, your offering envelopes out in the Welcome Center, um, that would help us a lot. Let's see. What else do I got here? Uh, also, just to kind of put in your mind and on your calendar headed into December, uh, the, all the choirs as well as additional folks at Messiah have been working on a cantata. They've put together this beautiful musical feast uh, for the 11 o'clock service at, uh, on December 17th. So if you are someone who would just love to, to hear that great, all these great gifts of music. That will be the whole service on December 17th, so you can remember that. Um, and we'll give you a heads up as we get closer. And then also just want to thank everyone for bringing in food. Uh, our preschool families as well brought in a lot of food out in the Welcome Center that we'll be giving away. Um, and also thank you to everyone who came out for the Harvest Festival and who helped and volunteered. Uh, that raised over $6,000 for Heart Food Pantry. It may even be more than that once we get the final count. Uh, but thank you to everyone who contributed in some way last Sunday. And then also, just as a reminder, we will not be having Messiah Night this Wednesday. Uh, so get all your cooking done and all that stuff uh, for Thursday evening. Uh, and then we'll return to Messiah Night the following Wednesday. With that, I invite you to stand as we join in song. Um, and I think we may have the words. If we don't, the chorus is very easy for this first one, and you can join in on that. Lavishly, our lives are wasted. Humbleness is left untasted. You can't live your life. Please yourself. That's a tip from my mistake. Exactly what it doesn't take. When you got a thumb in last place. Live your life. We've got to lose it. All the losers get a crown. Get down. Get down. 
again this morning. Glad to have you all here. Uh, today we are uh, thinking of how we're headed into Thanksgiving, uh, harvest uh, all that God has given us, and how do we live out from that abundance? Um, how do we live uh, open and free lives together? So we're glad you're here. If you're visiting with us, you can fill out a visitor's card in your seat. It's the yellow card, and uh, we are just glad to have you here. Let us sing together.
starting this week, huh? He's trying to be a good model. <laughs> Me? Really? It's been like months since I did a children's sermon. You guys ready? Uh oh. Let her go, Hayden. <laughs> Catch and release. <laughs> Come on, guys. Hey, um, here, here's where I got this. What's this right here? Money. money. Someone left this money on my desk, I, I think, for an offering to make today. What are my choices I can do with this money? I could, I could go and spend it and buy toys, right? Okay, there's my boy. <laughs> I could spend this and buy toys. Toys for me? Or you? Right? What's, okay, that's one thing. I could think of three things I could do with it. What's the second thing I could do with it? I could spend it and buy something for myself. Sophie? Okay, I could give it away, right? I could give it to somebody else, and they could spend it for something they might need. And she said charity, which means somebody who needs something. So not just give it to my brother who has as much money as I do, but give it to someone maybe who doesn't, right? And then there's a third thing I could do with it probably, right? It's probably what your parents encourage you to do when you get money. What do they encourage you to do with it? Save it, exactly, right? No one likes to do that. But that's the third thing we could do too. We could save the money, we could spend it on ourselves, or we could give it to someone who needs it, right? Okay, what's this? A can of pineapple. Who likes pineapple? Not me. Not you? So we will just talk to the ones who like pineapple. I got the same three choices for this one, don't I? I could, I, I could eat it, right? Right? Eat a whole can of pineapple makes you a little sick. I've done it before. Probably won't eat a quarter of a can, but I could eat it. Or I could save it for a day when it really sounds like a good thing to have pineapple. Right? Or what's the third thing I could do? It literally looks like pineapple. I... Yeah, and that's where I got this from. Someone, someone took this very good can of pineapple and they gave it away. And they gave it away to people in need. Okay? Whenever we have anything that the world needs, whether that's money or whether that's food, we really have those three options to do with them. And at different times in the life, all three of them make the most sense. But as people called to Jesus, called to be Jesus in the world, you are people that are supposed to be thinking all the time, is this something I'm able to give away? And what's the fear of giving stuff away? Because it's kind of scary to give things away. Like we could give that pineapple can away or those $2 bills. What's the fear? <coughs> CJ? Yeah, because if I give it away, I don't have it anymore for myself, do I? And maybe I'll never get another $2. Or maybe I'll never get another can of food. So a piece of being Christ in the world is trusting that there's abundance. And that God, and that God will provide if we're generous in the world. And that's hard. That's hard for adults. That's hard for old people with bald heads like me. And that's hard for little kids like you too to trust that there isn't enough in the world that I can give some away and still have what I need. Okay? Can you help me trust that? Yeah. Let's say a prayer. Holy God, help us trust your abundance no. and be generous with it, with everything we have. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. And you're following Sally? Oh, Catherine? Patsy? Miss Cromer right back there? Catherine. No, Angela, rather. <laughs> Mrs. Cromer right back there. Go on, down the, down the hall. Hey.
gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. For it is as, as if a man going on a journey, summoned by his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents, but the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. I have made five more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You've been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent 
also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seeds. So I was afraid. I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked, lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and I gather where did I not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all of those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But for those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for his worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. My, uh, I was just talking to Anthony before the service started here. My Minnesota Vikings are got a, uh, a couple tough games. They, got a, they play the St. Louis Rams uh, today at 1 o'clock and then a, 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 a pretty good Lions team on Thursday on Thanksgiving Day. And, and as I was uh, talking, I was thinking, you know, I said, my Minnesota Vikings, like they, like they belong to me. Or, you know, that, that's how fans talk, right? And even though, you know, they don't really care that much about us, we're, we're pretty invested in them. And, and, and fans, are, fans are funny for a lot of reasons, really, because if you're a fan of, of a football team or I guess any sports team, you're never really that satisfied. Unless you're crushing a team like OSU crushed Illinois yesterday, you're you're never really sure that they're going to win during the game or that they're doing it the right way. I mean, even if they go into the fourth quarter with a two-touchdown lead, you're still on edge because that's when coaches, they start playing conservatively then, right? And then, and then that drives you crazy. If you, they play something called a prevent defense, right? If you know what a, a, a prevent defense, it's what you do when, when you're in the fourth quarter and you're winning – and you just don't want to lose. That's your, that's your biggest goal, is not to lose. And, and so you put all your defensive guys to keep that big play from happening so that the other team doesn't uh, score quickly so they can score again and get morale and change the momentum. So you don't want to let the big play. But if you're a fan, all you're watching is this team that's been losing the entire time because your team is better and they're beating them. All of a sudden, that losing team is able to go two yards and then three yards and, and get all these short plays down the middle. And it drives you crazy as a fan. You're, you're, you're watching them march down slowly down the field, this losing team, and, and, and you're looking at that clock going, oh, my gosh, I hope they don't come back. Oh, my gosh, I hope they don't come back. Waiting for that clock to go because what you're focused on is that at the end of the game, you've got more points on the board than they've got points on the board. And you know that if they end up losing, those announcers are going to say something like, and every Browns fan has heard this at every game this year, well, they've squandered their lead again, right? They've squandered their lead again. That's like the, that's like the worst thing to hear when you're watching football. It's, it's just a bad thing to hear all over in life. I, I, I was thinking about that this week, and, and I've got a, a great-grandfather. So this man is really old. I mean, he was born, he was, his father was in the Civil War, so that tells you when, when, when he was born. Sometime in the 1870s, this guy was born. And, and he was born to a prominent farming family in uh, Perry, Illinois, Southern Illinois. And, and he married a, a, a woman who was part of a wealthy merchant family in Perry, Illinois. So two good marriage stock, right? And all of his cousins and nieces and nephews that knew him, that I knew when I was a child, they all described him one way, that he was a ne'er-do-well, that he was disappointing, uh, that, that he never lived up to what he could have been because he was a tenant farmer his entire life meaning he, he never owned a farm, he worked for other farmers, and he wasn't even a good tenant farmer, by the way the stories go, because every year my, my grandmother had to move <laughs> because the other farmer would fire him and they'd have to go to a different place to live and a different place to live. He was born in the fourth quarter with a two-touchdown lead, 
and he just squandered his lead. That's how I always heard the story, except for one person. My, my grandmother, who was his oldest daughter, my grandmother Nola, always described him as kind and gentle and loving and a good father, pretty passionately too. But everyone else was pretty convinced that this guy was a knucklehead, squandered his lead. I, I, I've always listened to this parable of talents, very familiar parable, important to me even as I've, as I've figured out who God is. I've always listened to this parable of talents as this third slave is a guy who has squandered his lead. Right? I mean, God has, 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 or the Lord of the manor, rather, has plucked these three slaves out, and, and, and they've won the lottery. They, he's made them lords of the manor and given them the resources to do it. And two of those slaves, they run with it. <laughs> they, 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 do, they do exactly what they're supposed to do, and we know that because they're able to double what they have. Right? They've nailed it. But this third guy, he's plucked out too. He's given wealth too. And he plays a prevent defense instead. His entire goal is just to keep that lead that he's been given, watching the clock for his Lord to return, hoping that he's got enough to give back at the end that his bean-counting Lord is going to call him a winner at the end of the game. And he obviously, the Lord of the manor is pretty disappointed with what this uh, third slave is doing, right? The, the, The Lord of the manor looks pretty angry by the time we get to that part of it. When I'm reading this, I'm thinking, he wanted that third slave to throw a few more passes in that fourth quarter, run up the score, show him who's boss, build it up. I've ingested these stories. And the stories my family tells about relatives that I've never even met. You know, I'm I'm a a white guy born in 1960s America to upper middle class parents who were very well educated and who had the means and and the commitment to make me very well educated. I was born in the fourth quarter with the two touchdown lead. (laughs) And I am spending my life so that it's clear I'm not going to squander that lead. Like my great-grandfather. Like this third slave. 2003, when Messiah called me to be their pastor, they plucked me out of a stable of pastors, of people who had more experience than me and had pastored larger church. I, I didn't even pastor a church by myself when you guys called me to be your pastor. I, 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 I won. I, 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 got on fourth. I got on fourth with two touchdown lead, and I wasn't going to let this thing go. The vast resources of wealth and talent in this place, we were going to increase our worship attendance, put more money in the bank, do great things, like those first two slaves. I was plucked out of the waters at Augsburg Lutheran Church in Toledo, Ohio, 1964, the fall. And I was given great gifts by a God who saw something in me that no one else could. And I have lived delighted with those great gifts and promised not to squander that lead that started on the first month of my birth. I'm going to pray harder, love more, be more generous, sacrificial, all the good things. I'm not going to squander this lead. And I'm here to tell you, that's a real tiring way to live. And when you start naming all those things that you're trying so hard to do, I start realizing just how far short I'm falling anyways. I don't pray enough. I have far more wealth I could share. I'm judgmental and impatient with the people that I'm called to be in ministry with. I'm not sure I've ever really moved anybody to love Jesus who didn't already know Jesus. I'm not even sure how that's possible. Uh, Our our congregation has been flat in worship attendance for about five years now. We got a shaky financial year here in 2017. Uh, The only good personal financial decision I've ever made in my own life 
was marrying someone from a family who's a lot wealthier than my family. And that didn't work for my great-grandfather. Why would I think it would work for me? And I've spent my life thinking that I was in the fourth quarter <laughs> and I just needed to get to that finish line with enough on the scoreboard that my bean counting Lord would say, okay. Because I don't want to be yelled at like that third slave. So I, I'm in a tender space right now in my life, and, and, I, and so I struggled with this text as I read it this week, and, and, and I was very thankful that a, a, a blogger uh, about this text lifted up a, a, a different way to look at it. He suggested that this parable doesn't take place in the fourth quarter. This parable takes place at the end of the game. <laughs> that, that this game's already over. That when this lord of the manor plucked these three obscure slaves out and said, guess what? You get to be king of the day or the week or the month. <laughs> and oh yeah, here's millions of dollars for you to accomplish that task. They won. <laughs> That was the day of victory right there. This parable starts in the locker room with champagne bottles exploding and everyone cheering. And the only thing the Lord of the manor asked them to do was what? Not double those millions I give you. The only thing the Lord of the manor asked them to do was do Lord-like things. <laughs> Be Lord while I'm gone. That was their task. And these two slaves in the beginning, they did Lord-like things. Because the Lord of the manor in this parable is a knucklehead, and he gives away his great wealth to three slaves who don't really deserve it, and Lord knows they don't really know what to do with it. <laughs> so just as wildly and as extravagantly as that guy gives away these talents to these three slaves, those first two guys, they wildly and extravagantly give away that kind of stuff, using it for whatever. And because there's abundance in this world that we cannot just get our head around, it pops, grows. They won on the day the Lord of the manor plucked them out, and they lived their life as if they were winning. And then this third slave, right? He's convinced he's still in the fourth quarter. He's convinced the clock is still ticking down. And his only goal is to have this wealth to give back. But the Lord of the manor never said, bring me back that wealth. He said, do Lord-like things. And does this Lord of the manor in this parable bury his treasures? No. He's a knucklehead. He gives them to people who don't deserve them and expects them to be just as crazy and wild and extravagant with them, not bury them. His great anger wasn't that there wasn't more to bring back. His great anger was that this guy didn't act Lord-like. We were plucked out of the waters of our baptisms, not because of anything you did, said, raise your hand, prove to God, just because God decided, I'm going to give you some fantastic gifts. And the only thing God has asked you and me and us to do is be just as crazy and stupid and wild and extravagant with those good gifts that we've been given. <laughs> be just as foolish and sharing them in the world. The unstoppable love that God has for us. You were declared victors on that day. Not almost victors, not close to a victory. You were declared victors on the day of your baptism and, and told to live like victors. <laughs> Popping champagne bottles every day you're out in the world loving as God loved you. Who told us that my great-grandfather was a loser? 
when he died poorer than he started, right? How did we buy into that? When the woman that knew him most, second only to his wife that he was married to for over 60 years, was passionate in convincing me that he was warm and gentle and loving and kind. If you're studying Ephesians with us like the men are on Thursday morning and Wednesday, that's exactly who Paul writes we should be like in this world. Sounds to me like my great-grandfather lived sharing extravagantly the love he received. Where did I get the idea that at the end of my days here at Messiah Lutheran Church, the one measure that's going to show us whether we're winning or losing, (laughs) whether we've been good and faithful servants, is whether we got more butts in the pews or or dollars in the bank. (laughs) All those things would be great, let me tell you. (laughs) But what's going to excite our Lord is if we were Lord-like in this community, Christ-like in this community, loving and sacrificing and accepting and welcoming those we've been brought into contact with. We have won. (laughs) The victory is ours. We have been given these great gifts, and all our Lord wants us to do is be just as foolish and wild and extravagant with him as he is when he chose us. Because there is an abundance of love in this world that comes from God. And we cannot run out of it. We just need to share it. Amen. We have a a song from our men as we prepare to eat and share our offering.
rising of the sun until the going down of the same. He's worthy, Jesus is worthy, He's worthy to We stand for our prayers. Holy God, we pray this morning that you make us a people who are Christ-like in this community. Help us grab on to the victory we've won in our baptism and share the abundance of our reward, your love, pray for all those who have come into this worship space this morning feeling anything like but a victor. That we may come around them and encourage them, hold them as they heal in this space, and lead them to trust this abundant love they've been given. We pray for all those who are broken. Pray for all those who need healing. Naming those names now aloud as a congregation. And we pray for all those celebrating today too, Lord. We're anxious to celebrate in the Thanksgiving weekend ahead. Meet us in this space, God. Feed us your wine and your bread, which Jesus promised would bear your presence in the world. For in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, given to his disciples and saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this wine, we proclaim the very mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We are waiting for your return, anxious to share this life of victory you've promised. Come, Holy Spirit, come meet us today in this space. May your absence be no more from us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. This is day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We'll commune our assistants and then bring this meal forward for everyone to eat. All are invited at this table, a feast of God's presence.
meal through the word given to us may you reign in our hearts reign with love and victory and power and grace in your name we pray amen if you miss my announcements at the beginning of the service just check out your bulletin board uh, to find out what is going on this week let us stand and sing and i'll give our benediction the lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. Amen. crossing is always the straight and the narrow the wide and the shallow but I know that you're guiding me that the best is yet to come you've given me hope for tomorrow and I know someday
face the obvious that crashes over me. It's always in front of me. It helps me to remember this is what I live for. And I can't